Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the fifth in a series of Zoom lectures sponsored by Congregation KINS. <clears throat> For those of you who may be unfamiliar with this program, our speakers will focus on STEM topics and their correlation with Torah. We have redefined STEM a little by adding medicine and psychology to the usual topics of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It is my pleasure to introduce my friend and our speaker for today, Rabbi Michael Myers. His topic is music as an expression of the soul. Aside from being a much sought after speaker in Chicago, Rabbi Myers is a teacher of Bible and modern Jewish history. He received a smicha from Hebrew Theological College and his BA degree from Loyola University, and then earned a Master of Arts degree in Educational Administration from the University of Illinois in 1979. In 1984, he was awarded a Cole International Fellowship, and in 1986, was selected as a Jerusalem Fellow. He began teaching at Ida Crown Jewish Academy in 1981, and has taught for many years at the Hebrew Theological College. Rabbi Myers is proud to have served as Dean of HTC and has taught for the Blitzstein Teachers Institute, the division of the HTC. In addition, he is no stranger to Congregation KINS as he has been giving a weekly Shabbos shear for approximately 30 years. If you have any questions for Rabbi Myers, please save it until the end of his presentation, and then I will ask you to unmute yourself and ask your questions. It is now my pleasure to turn the program over to Michael Myers. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to be with you this afternoon. Probably we have to add an, a new letter M to the STEM sessions, and this one would be with music. However, if you speak to any uh, musician, anybody who studied musical theory, they will tell you about the mathematical precision that the mathematical precision that is so essential uh, for, for truly beautiful music. So I want to begin today with um, uh, an interesting uh, parak in Tehillim. David HaMelech begins per uh, kuf memchet with the, the phrase, Shiru la Hashem shir chadash. Sing unto Hashem a new song. That in fact, each and every day, um, David uh, admonishes us to sing a new song. And it is uh, interesting that people describe <clears throat> uh, music, oftentimes the main, one of the main characteristics of music as repetition with variation. Music needs both repetition, a repetitive element to it, and variation, that within the theme itself, that uh, there is a, a certain variation that takes place. So with your indulgence, I'd like to, um, to present to you a, a segment from uh, uh, actually Beethoven's fifth, Beethoven's fifth, uh, fifth symphony. Uh, this one is uh, conducted uh, by uh, Daniel Bern, uh, uh, Birnbaum, uh, who is uh, one, of the great one of the great conductors in the world. So I'm going to play this, and we're going to see how Beethoven weaves his theme throughout the, the first movement. It takes about eight minutes, but I hope you, you'll find it uh, a source of great enjoyment to you. Can you fix the sound? No. Only he can fix it. They can't hear it. Yeah, right. They cannot hear it. 
Am I right? You're correct. They, they cannot hear it. I can't hear it. Yeah, that means nobody can. I can't hear it either. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, we'll have to go to plan B. Where are we where are we supposed to put on the sound? What do you what do you think? I don't know. Can you hear me now, Michael? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, why don't you Why don't you go back to the share screen mode and make sure that okay. That, I'll stop sure share. That, yeah. Stop share, and then start sharing again, and look for that. And start sharing again. Start sharing again. What? Uh, yes. Start. Oh, wait. Sharing maybe again. I'm muted. Yeah. Share computer sound. Are you you're on? Yes, let's try it again. Let's try it again and look for that link way over in the left side of the box. Yes, it is. But it doesn't seem to, still not. Even so, it says share sound. It's not doing it. Okay, well. All right. Then maybe we better cancel this part of it. Okay. We'll, we'll cancel this part of it. Okay. All right, let's go back. All right. Um, I'm sorry, we're, we're having a tech. Hello? No. Yes. No, so I would just cancel that part and proceed. We're with having technical difficulties with this section. Um, I hope I, ca I can be heard. I hope so. I can be heard. All right, well, this is Beethoven's famous um, Fifth Symphony, which begins dun 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 dun. Now, if I had lived in 1804 when Beethoven was first conceiving this, uh, this uh, uh, symphony, I probably would have told him, Ludwig, don't quit your day job because it, it in and of itself, by itself, doesn't appear to have much much artistic value to it. But Beethoven himself said that heard sounds are beautiful. Heard melodies are beautiful. But unheard melodies are even more beautiful. Apparently Beethoven heard all of, um, all of his music, all of this music in his head. And there, there were no mistakes. Nobody was off tune. Nobody jumped the gun. Everybody acted per perfectly in sequence. And so therefore his repetition um, and his, uh, what he heard in, in the symphony itself, the repetition with variation over and over again, the theme comes back of uh, bum, 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 which is uh, intended, of course, to start in a way that had never been started before a symphony. So in that sense, um, there is, a, there is a beautiful quality, which unfortunately we're not going to hear today. Uh, the Malbim tells us that there is a difference between Shear and Zemer. The Zemirot that, that we uh, sing on Shabbat, of course, are, they have within them song. All Zemirot have within them Shear. But Shear is any type of a song which is put to a melody. It could be secular in nature. It could be it could be profoundly religious in nature, but it, uh, it, it, it is a certain kind of song, but the zemer, zmirot, uh, for example, ashira azamer al Hashem, we, the Malbim tells us we always find shir first, followed by the elevation of the shir to zemer, which in itself is a, a proclamation of God's um, uh, of, of God's providential care over us in each and every way, so that a zemer refers to nisim, a zemer refers to God's protective care, hashkacha pratit, and that would then be the difference between the two. Now, the idea of, of the symphony itself, but it, not just this symphony, but any symphony, begins with an abstract idea 
without question, Beethoven or Mozart or Haydn or any of the great composers uh, started with an abstract idea in their head. Now they had to communicate that idea from what was going on in their head to the people who would eventually hear it. And that's done through a series of what appears to be nonsensical notes um, that we find on music sheets that only certain people are capable of reading. And those, uh, those notes, uh, when you look at them, even, even a person skilled in, in, in reading musical notes, the person who's not skilled can read the notes, but not see the magnificence, will not see the potential that is there. The person that brings those notes, those musical notes on paper that seem bland to life is the conductor. The conductor's job is to literally animate those notes that, that she or he is capable of not only reading, but interpreting very carefully to bring it to people that we call musicians. Even a conductor with no musicians still has not brought the original abstract idea uh, in, into fruition. What do we need for that? In order for it to become in, uh, to fruition, we need musicians. We need people um, who play, whether it's the percussion instruments, whether it is the horns, whether the stringed instruments and all their various different forms, each of them is carefully aligned through the score that the composer makes to, to enter into the, into the composition at a certain point, leave the composition to a certain point. All of that, the remarkable nature of it is, all of that was in Beethoven's head. It was the melody for Beethoven that was even unheard, even more beautiful than, than the melody which is heard. Now, when the Torah tells us, or Chazal tell us, that, um, uh, that the Torah preceded the creation of the world. Histakel ba'oraita ovara alma, that God looked into the uh, into the Torah, so to speak, and created the world. So there are those who certainly interpret that every aspect of the world then is in one form or the other uh, must conform to Torah. It doesn't matter whether it's biology or zoology, uh, whether uh, it is uh, whether it is in human accord. All of these things must uh, comply with the rules of nature. Human nature, of course, um, is different in that we have free choice. Nature itself um, functions based upon a Kodesh Baruch Hu's plan that he set forth in the Torah. Now, what is that plan? In and of itself, we don't know. So uh, it starts as an abstract idea, the most abstract idea, which would be in the mind of God himself, the creator that in order to communicate that to uh, human beings, what God must do is put down notes. As the composer begins with an abstract idea and puts uh, musical notes to paper, HaKadosh Baruch Hu put to paper the Torah Shebechtav, the written law, which in and of itself can be very inspiring if you know a little bit, but it also could be something which is easily, easily misinterpreted. For example, the term, uh, the term uh, that ayin tachat ayin, that an eye for an eye, the whole world, the entire world misinterprets an eye for an eye, except for Chazal and except for the Jewish people, that we know that an eye for an eye speaks of compensation when uh, Ruvain uh, in some way damages or puts out Shimon's eye compensation must be appropriate and commensurate with the, the loss that was suffered uh, by the individual. That's what it means. Unfortunately, if there is no conductor to tell us and to interpret what these notes are, uh, we stray and we don't really know what they are. And so therefore, just as uh, for any symphony, we have a conductor who provides for the tempo, who provides for the, the variation in sound, and provides for all the elements of all of the musicians, so also uh, our Torah has its conductor. The conductor is the Torah Shabal Peh, as interpreted by, the, by, by Chazal. They tell us the temple. They tell us what, what I, an eye for an eye is. 
they help us to understand the relationship between chesed and din, and, and, uh, and what tzedek is, and what, what mesharim is. Tzedek, making sure that, that uh, as Shlomo uses these term, the terminology, tzedek is making sure that the, fa- the rules apply fairly to all. Mishpat is to make sure that individuals have, each and every person gets what he or she is entitled to if they come to din. They have to, you have to use the Torah to determine those things. And finally, may, finally, may Sharim, the interpretation that Chazal have for us uh, is that, that we have to learn to be able to understand and know, be, be willing to forego at one point or another uh, some rights that we might be entitled to. So for example, if two people see uh, an example of foregoing one's rights, or which would be may Sharim, would be two people See, uh, there's a sale, perhaps, uh, and uh, on, on a piece of clothing. And it's first come, first serve. The last piece of clothing is there. And uh, the person who gets there first is a person who's quite wealthy. And the person who doesn't get there on, uh, at uh, first uh, loses out on the item. Now, from the standpoint of pure fairness, the person who got there first should, in fact, get the item. And in fact, if it was brought to, to a court, that's what the ruling would have to be. But there is a third element. There is tzedek, fairness, there is mishpat, there is justice, and then there is the willingness to forego one's rights. Certainly the person who's very wealthy, who saw the item on sale and could get that, could pay for that item in another place, even though they're entitled to it, they can forego their rights that's Meisharim, that concept of Lifnim Mishurat Adin, going beyond the letter of the law, that is uniquely a part of the Torah Shabal Peh. That is what, how our conductors have given, uh, have, have interpreted our Torah. Now, as, as it is with music, that we go from the abstract to the raw notes to the conductor, the conductor in itself has not brought the abstract idea back to what it originally was. He needs musicians. She needs musicians. People who can follow the dictates of, of the conductor and thus bring, when they do it all together, they bring the abstract idea to its, uh, to its uh, full glory by, through the music which is heard. Similarly, the abstract idea of the Torah began in a Kodesh Baruch Hu's mind, Kiva Yochol. But he had to communicate it to human beings, and it was done in notes, basic notes. And it's not just uh, the, the note of, of uh, 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 every single mitzvah in the Torah has within it a, a myriad of details. When we stand for, for an older, older person, how we stand and uh, when, how close that person is, all of those things are part of the Torah Shabbal Peh. Chazal are the conductors that teach us how to interpret the Torah Shabbal Peh. Ah, but it hasn't come yet to its full fruition. The abstract idea is still abstract until the players enter. And who are the players? Klau Yisrael. The Jewish people over all the centuries, we have listened to the conductors, who interpret the notes, who teach us how to act in our daily lives, each and every day, to know when we must employ, when we must employ fairness, which is, of course, always, to know when strict justice must apply, and sometimes to know when we go with not, uh, din, not necessarily by the letter of the law, but by going by the intrinsic nature of what the law is. And if we have done all of those things, if we move from the abstract idea to, to the Torah's notes, to the ba- Torah Shabbal Peh, and we play the music, we now approximate the very idea that a Kodesh Baruch Hu had for the perfect world in which we can live. Now, one other element, Shiru Vashem Shir Chadash. As I mentioned before, and unfortunately it was not brought out uh, in this segment of, uh, of Beethoven's Fifth, I might add that it, each of you can certainly hear Beethoven's Fifth um, by just going onto YouTube, uh, and you can hear it anytime you want, any night you want, in any number of different symphon- uh, different orchestras, with any number of different conductors. 
uh, right here, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, which is not playing now, but most of them are not playing, but any night you can hear it. If you listen carefully, you will hear the repetition with variation. Uh, it's not always just da 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 da. It is, it is that very same theme with, and it's variation through French horns. It is through viola. It is through, it is through uh, cellos. It is through so many different elements that Beethoven brings the, the stunning, stunning um, uh, message of his, of his symphony to us. Now, I know oftentimes each of us probably has felt at one point or another. Each of us feels, oh my goodness, I say the same Suke de Zimra every day. Every day I say, say it. Every day I say the Hallelujahs. Every day I say Shmon Esrei. Every day I say Kriyat Shema. So how do I avoid, how do I avoid the boredom of repetition? I would suggest to you that it's through the same method employed by music and by the symphony. It must be repetition because repetition ingrains within us those elements of our lives that are essential, but we need variation in our life. To choose uh, each week, perhaps, to pick a different parak. Say them all, or even if you don't say them all, but let's assume you say them all. Say them all, but this, this week I'm going to concentrate on this one. And I'm going to think about the words as I do it with special care. And whether it's Psuche de Zimmer or whether it's Shimon Esrei or whether it's any other element of, of uh, Shimon Esrei, which is Chazal uh, tell us, Al Tasek Tvilat Chakeva, don't make your, your davening routine. When it becomes routine, then in fact, we, we, we fall into a, a certain ennui of, of boredom and, and, uh, uh, and a lack of, of, uh, of intensity. But if we repeat with, with variation, as we find in the, in the symphonies, so then uh, we will be able to hopefully uh, find our davening more meaningful and be able to enter fully into the, uh, the new year with a, a renewed sense of purpose and connection. So with that, uh, we would have had eight more minutes. <laughs> but right now, um, if anybody has any questions or <clears throat> comments, and again, I apologize for the technical difficulty. Thank you. Um, is it okay for me to speak? Unfortunately, I can't hear the... I can't hear anyone. They can hear me, I guess. But uh, oh, let's see. Yes. See if you're muted uh, I, in, the, in the bottom of your screen. One second. Yeah, you know I'm not... This isn't working right now, so... It might be we have to just stop right now, I think. Uh, okay. Um, sorry for all of the technical difficulties that we have. Uh, but uh, before you sign off, I have a couple of quick announcements that I would like to make. First of all, special thank you to Rabbi Myers for his presentation today. Thank you to all of you for participating. And uh, <clears throat> we will be taking a one-week break during Sukkot. So the next meeting will be two weeks from today, October 13th at noon. It will be a very fascinating topic, DNA identification and halacha, and will be presented by Rabbi Yona Reese, the Abbezdin of the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Also, at any time, if you would like to determine what next week's topic is, simply go to the KINS website and you will see uh, the next topic being announced. And uh, very finally, if you would just give me one moment, I want to share this screen with you. Let's see share. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. This is the upcoming schedule for all of our lectures between now and then. So uh, we, we have some uh, COVID-19 case studies, uh, origin of the Torah and the sciences view of the Torah and uh, another Jewish calendar topic. So thank you all again for signing in today. Truly very sorry for the technical difficulties and that made it very difficult for Rabbi Myers, but we thank you again for your presentation. And uh, I'm going to 
sign us all out now and we will see you hopefully in two weeks.